This video lecture is intended for use in PSY 101 General Psychology at Jefferson College. Students should read the accompanying textbook chapter using the provided learning guides to begin note-taking prior to viewing the video. The video lecture should then be used to enrich notes and the encoding of information. This video goes along with the textbook chapter 15, The Treatment of Psychological Disorders. We will be covering the behavior therapies in this video. We will be covering the following learning objectives for chapter 15 related to behavior therapies. There are three types of psychotherapy, insight therapies, behavior therapies, and biomedical therapies. The behavior therapies are therapies that apply the behavioral theories of classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and observational learning in order to change the overt or observable behavior. The goal for the behavior therapies is to use principles such as extinction and observational learning to help people unlearn maladaptive behaviors, bad habits, and learn new behaviors or good habits. From a behavioral standpoint, all psychological issues are due to some sort of poor learning experience or learning a bad habit. We will be discussing several techniques used in behavioral therapy. The first of these techniques is systematic desensitization. This behavioral technique uses classical conditioning to treat phobias. In classical conditioning, someone can learn a fear of an object or a situation if this neutral object or situation has been paired with a fearful stimulus, something that naturally scared you. As a result, you can get rid of this fear or unlearn this learned behavior using extinction. In order to unlearn this behavior, you have to expose yourself or your client to their feared object, in this example, a snake. We typically do this through constructing something called an anxiety hierarchy, where we talk about what would be the most anxiety-provoking snake exposure all the way down to the least. For example, Someone may be uncomfortable talking about snakes, but they can deal with that. They may be slightly more uncomfortable looking at a picture of a snake, slightly more uncomfortable with viewing a video of a snake, even more uncomfortable with viewing a snake inside an aquarium, and finally the most anxiety provoking would be touching a snake itself. Through extinction, we would gradually expose to the anxiety hierarchy, going higher and higher up. At each step of the hierarchy, the therapist would help the patient manage any symptoms of anxiety and then continue exposure up until they were able to confront their fears. Another form of behavioral therapy is called aversion therapy. This one also uses classical conditioning. However, with this particular theory, we want to use classical conditioning to teach someone to avoid something. For example, so for example, if someone had a problem with alcohol, we could pair the alcohol with a drug that makes you sick. So that every time you drink alcohol, you would get very sick, nauseous, feel terrible. And through the use of classical conditioning, we would like for you to associate alcohol with the same thing that you would associate nausea and having an upset stomach. Ugh. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I have no desire to be near that. We have attempted to use aversion therapy for things like alcohol and drug addiction. 
smoking, and even sexual deviants such as pedophiles. Uh, what we found is that the aversion therapy does not work as well as the systematic desensitization does for phobias. Another form of behavioral therapy is social skills training. Social skills training uses observational learning and also the reinforcement from operant conditioning. Typically, this occurs in group therapy, but it can also occur in individual therapy. What we do is we have a model demonstrate proper social skills, how to talk to people in an appropriate manner, and then within the therapy session, the client will practice these new skills and be reinforced when they do a good job. This type of therapy is uh, frequently done with children, um, also with adolescents, particularly people who have disorders that make it harder for them to socialize. For example, people with ADHD oftentimes have poor social skills, so social skills training is one way that we can try to improve that. The last form of behavioral therapy we're going to talk about is cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy combines two different types of therapy. One, the behavioral principles of reinforcement and observational learning, along with therapy that is specifically designed to target the way that we think. Remember, cognitive cognition has to do with how you think and make decisions. So this type of therapy was developed by Aaron Beck with the goal to try to change the way people think. This is typically done through a process of talking about the client's thoughts, also having them write down their thoughts about different situations, and then the therapist and the client work to detect any sort of negative, unrealistic thoughts. Those thoughts are then subjected to reality testing, designed to um, have a more realistic and neutral view versus the negative view. For example, um, if somebody says to themselves quite frequently when they're experiencing a stressful situation, I'm such an idiot, I can't do anything right, they're likely to have feelings of anxiety and depression. In cognitive therapy, the client would be taught to challenge those thoughts. So for example, the thought, I can't do anything right. Every one of us can come up with at least one instance in our lives when we did something right. And so when we think about that and we reality test that thought, what we discover is that thought is now false and it allows us to change the thought to something more realistic, such as, I made a mistake, but it's just one mistake. When we evaluate the effectiveness of these behavioral therapies, we're going to run into some of those same problems we ran into in evaluating insight therapies, problems like um, spontaneous remission, uh, a little bit of the subjectiveness of whether or not someone's gotten better, although behavior therapy does a little bit better job of trying to make that clear. And we also run into problems of diversity of the problems that we're trying to compare. Even with all of those issues, what we see is that behavioral therapies are slightly better than insight therapies for some types of problems. For example, anxiety disorders seem to be particularly helped by the behavioral therapies. Another nice thing about behavior therapies is they can be used in combination with just about any other form of therapy. So we often see behavior therapy as a component of other forms of therapy. I have one last slide that actually involves playing a separate YouTube video for you. The address is on this slide. I'm going to set it up so that you can see it without having to view a different YouTube video. I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to work,
So if it doesn't work very well, you can always go to the video yourself. Hello, I'm Dr. Norman Anderson, and welcome to This Is Psychology. Every day, consumers are bombarded with ads and other messages touting drugs as the answer to their health problems, whether those problems are physical or emotional. While drugs are sometimes the best way to treat illness, that is not always the case, especially when it comes to certain mental health problems. Recently, the American Psychological Association studied the peer-reviewed literature examining the effectiveness of psychotherapy. The research showed that psychotherapy is indeed effective, that it helps reduce the overall need for health services, and that it produces long-term health improvement. Psychotherapy can teach people coping skills they can continue to use throughout their lives. Yet, the use of psychotherapy to treat mental and behavioral health issues decreased over the last decade, while the use of drugs to address such problems has increased, according to government and insurance industry data. For some problems, such as anxiety and mild to moderate depression, psychotherapy alone is often the best first treatment option. Research has shown that for many patients with mental health problems, Psychotherapy works better than drugs. Plus, psychotherapy often has positive effects even after the treatment is completed. It is also important to remember that for some disorders, a combination of medication and psychotherapy is often the best treatment. The APA recognizes that for many consumers, their primary care physician is the first health care professional they consult about health issues. Many of those issues stem from behavioral or emotional factors. All consumers and healthcare providers should be aware of the benefits of psychotherapy to address many of these factors. As Americans grapple with the increasing cost of healthcare, it is important that consumers and those making decisions about healthcare access understand the potential value psychotherapy can provide in both improved outcomes and cost savings. APA applauds and continues to support collaboration of psychologists with other healthcare providers as part of integrated healthcare teams. Psychotherapy is highly effective, but only when consumers have access to it. Thanks for watching. This is Psychology. As you can see from this particular video, insight and behavioral psychotherapies are an effective way of treating many disorders. This concludes the behavioral therapy portion of Chapter 15.